Hello everyone. It's Sunday the 31st of May 2020 and we're going to go and have a look at the uh, flood defences, temporary flood defences that they've built here at uh, the southern end of Kittara where, uh, where we live. This is the first thing they've done. Um, they've basically put this giant pipe in where the uh, normal drain would go uh, basically to stop any water that would want to come back up out of the drain system uh, going all over the road. Uh, the l two years ago uh, when we had bad floods uh, this whole car park area here was flooded uh, up to about sort of probably the bottom of those trees um, and likewise down there as well where our car is um, because the uh, the water was coming up out of the drains um, as opposed to sort of over the top of the hill so uh, yeah let's go and have a look at the rest of them now so as you can see they've uh, put up Ryan's, uh, road signs saying that the uh, the road is temporarily closed along here uh, as you can see the water is uh, definitely coming up through the ground in this area um, it's pretty usual for it to do that every spring um, again two years ago though this part of the road was underwater to sort of ankle depth because the water was coming out of there at such a, a force however this year they've really gone to town on the temporary flood defences as you can see in front of us now is the reason why the road is closed because the road has had a flood defence built right on top of it. Um, this blue pipe that we can see here is connected to a pump which seems to be pumping water out of there and it's not going into the water management system there I think although we'll see now when we get over there so it's either going into that manhole cover or big drain cover there behind the uh, the grey container uh, grey cabinet that you can see or it's going right over the temporary flood defences and back into the river so but uh, yeah to give you some idea of how big this earth bank is I'm 181 centimeters tall and at its highest this earth bank is up to my chin yeah that's, that's chin level to me now here is where it is, is at its highest um, and you can see there another low area where water was coming out of the uh, the drain right there in front of me that big brown po pipe sticks out of the ground uh, they leave that there pretty much all year now um, but now they're obviously pumping water either out of there and back into the river or I don't believe they'd actually be pumping it from the river into there because that's uh, a quite a low spot where the water comes back up through the ground so yes they're pumping it out of there and then across the temporary flood defences and back into the river on the other side so here I am now walking up on top of the uh, the flood defences uh, right so as you can see here this electricity substation the electricity uh, company the local electricity company came round plaster wrapped it and then built up that huge stone base uh, basically to stop it floating away um, it was pretty high up but the ground it was sitting on wasn't that substantial so first they plaster wrapped it and then they did that and I believe that pipe there is for pumping excess water or sucking excess water uh, out of the system before they go in there um, as you can see here the water is seeping through the ground that strip of grass you see down there is pavement level basically 
um, so this water here wouldn't have come onto the road yet um, but it would have been very close uh, they've made the top of the other half of the um, flood defences uh, a system whereby the, uh, the people that live in this house here can drive or get in and out of their property anyway um, although I'm not sure how they're going to do about crossing that pipe there don't know what's going on here somebody's been digging it up not sure if that's judging by the tire tracks in it I think that's been done maybe on purpose to see how wet it is underneath but um, yeah it certainly feels very solid when you're standing on top of this yeah uh -huh. and as we walk uh, along the sand uh, the temporary flood defenses towards the center of Kidala so we're facing north right now you can see that uh, the the small end of Randadia that is normally just a sandy gravelly road has been completely submerged for about 20 or 30 meters um, basically where that bank goes down there that's about road level at the bottom of it so there's a couple of centimeters maybe a little more on top and uh, yes would you believe it it's actually starting to rain now so just what we didn't need um, again all this is water that's actually now broke uh, come over the top this isn't coming through the ground this has actually come over the top from the river that's down there behind those trees and uh, again this strip of grass down here is with the edge of the pavement so it's not far off pavement level now but uh, let's take a walk along this bank some more and uh, see where uh, see where it's at in relation to our apartment building as you can see the temporary flood defenses they built around that house are uh, going to be tested soon so now i'm standing at what i call the the end of phase two of the temporary flood defenses this bit here that they built all along the road um they started building on monday morning and was pretty much done by wednesday afternoon um, what I call phase one is this that we're going to walk along now. They started work for this last summer. They went through the forest and cleared a lot of trees and general forest debris out of the way and put marker posts and what have you all over the, the forest to show people where this needed to go. Um, there is meant to be some permanent flood defences uh, erected around here. This is not going to be the actual permanent flood defences. But, uh, oh dear, as you can see, it's definitely uh, coming into that uh, garden there. Um, there's definitely the sound of rushing water in those pipes. Uh, in that manhole cover down there but the the only pipe that they have leading into that right now is actually empty it's not pumping anything um, that big blue pipe that started in that flooded area on the other side of the road does indeed come all the way along here join to a white creamy colored pipe there and indeed is exiting very slowly and limply down here in fact for some reason they've got it pumping out all the way over there so i hope you can see that dark area of sand on the uh on the edge of the bank uh that's obviously some sort of high water mark uh, again there on that tree uh, there is a, a slightly higher damp mark um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the flood is going down far from it uh, the Finnish Meteorological Institute and the Finnish uh, Environmental Agency have basically said that we have got a orange level uh, flood warning 
from now through to the afternoon of the 7th of June. So, um, basically it's sort of ebbing and flowing slightly. The river itself, uh, which is a good several hundred metres, five, six hundred metres that way, as we look now through the trees, um, the river down our end is completely clear and there is no ice dams underneath the, the bridge that leads from Kittala to Sodengula. Uh, but it's certainly not, um, the river itself is certainly not entirely ice free. So we shall see, we shall see. Now walking along here, yes, this water is, water level is now right at the bottom of this temporary flood defense. In fact, judging by the amount of flotsam that's in this river here, I would imagine that if this bank wasn't here, the water would probably be about there by now. Um, there is certainly a little rise in the land, but not until we get sort of about 10 meters in the direction that we're looking now. And it's not a very large rise, and it's certainly a very uneven rise. So this certainly seems to be doing the business. Not sure where this large tree has come from, if that's something that's fallen down in the spring, or if that's something they chopped down last summer and never came to chop it, take away. I don't know. And of course, we still have large, large piles of unmelted snow. So it's the last day of June, the air temperatures, in the high teens, we haven't had much in the way of direct sunlight today, uh, but as you can see, large, large piles of unmelted snow. So, we are now on top of the phase one flood defences, and I am walking due south, um, around the backs of the apartment complex where we live. Okay, as we approach uh, the part of the forest area that's flooded that's closest to our apartment building you can see that the water level is somewhat further away from the flood defences there is pretty much where the water is now we're about a metre the other side of the water level now there is a very large steep natural bank um, that sort of protects this forestry area forested area from the more traditional swampy forested area and um, that's sort of acting as a natural flood defences right now. Small pile of sand, uh, sorry, snow there. Um, they've made they've made a pretty straight cut through the forest at this point, and it leads. So that's our apartment building there. We're at the very far end of that apartment building, but that's our apartment building there. Uh, the water has definitely been higher than this in relation to where we are now. Uh, two years ago, the water got up to the bottom of that tree. So, certainly as far as this area is concerned, there's a little bit to go. But like I said, the, uh, the snow is still melting off Levy and the river is still frozen in places. So... The, uh, the Meteorological Institute and the Environmental Agency have still calculated that there's a lot more water to come, I believe. Um, so they've come along here in the last two or three days and shored up the apartment building side of this bank, where in some places it had dried out of all things and started to collapse. But uh, we're going to keep walking now around towards the river itself and uh, we'll see where the, uh, the river has got in terms of the, uh, the area that's most affected. So this is not a road road that they've built it on. This is now a, a standard footpath slash bike path that they've built the flood defences on. So. That's our, uh, uh, the path that came behind, the flood defences that came behind the apartment buildings. And now, 
over there in the distance you can see of the river and yeah it's high it's definitely high <laughs> um, there's uh, there's some puddles where the path is actually the water is actually seeping up through the ground um, okay I had to slightly relocate there uh, as I was coming around the, uh, the corner I realized that uh, that heavy plant machinery that I could have uh, that I heard a few minutes ago was actually right there uh, they seem to be in a strengthening both sides um, of the uh, the bank on that corner down there um, and they are putting in some pumps uh, and pipes as well to carry water from that I would imagine is going to be seeping through the ground in that very small forestry area there and over into there and there's the river um, just the other side of that snowbank uh, in fact the base of that tree right there uh, the JCB started up now the base of this tree here has a plaque on it uh, from that indicates the uh, the level the water got to in the big flood uh, 20 years ago um, so Might be a Sunday afternoon, but if the work needs to be done, the work needs to be done. So yes, it's not um, not as groundbreaking, uh, re record-breaking levels of floods as it has been in the past. Um, and if they hadn't built this flood defences, should the water reach the uh, the plaque, le uh, the level of the uh, wooden plaque at the bottom of that tree, um, then yes, it would be all the way over here as well and that's our health center and that's uh, an OAP uh, assisted living accommodation uh, which I believe they're in the process of uh, evacuating those that they can now um, we'll take a walk around the back of that in a second so yes the normal level of the river that tree that's center frame right now um, the normal level of the river is about two and a half to three meters below the base of that tree and right now the water's about a meter up that tree so it's about three and a half to four meters higher than uh, standard levels are uh, this is the area where they're most worried um, because as you can see this is uh, this is where people live certainly at this end uh, quite close to the river um, when they built this and I don't remember when they built this uh, they moved all this land up a very long way um, but they didn't they did not uh, count on record-breaking levels of snowfall which has led to nearly record-breaking levels of floods and like I said we're only at the beginning of it so there is as you can see that one's sprung a leak uh, there's at least two pipes that are taking the water from ah they're taking the water from inside that uh, drain over there and putting it back in the river um, here it looks like they're getting semi-permanent because they're they've cleared out part of the bank ready probably to put in one of these big concrete manhole cover extenders uh, this pipe doesn't seem to be pumping anything yet uh, only that blue one over there seems to be ejecting anything at the moment but um, yes the river is now here um, is at the base of the flood defenses so 
if this flood defence wasn't here, I would imagine the water level would be probably lapping at the bottom of that blue pallet over there and maybe a metre or so away from the base of the building over there. So, as you can see, it's uh, very much needed in this area. Um, there's another pipe that's uh, been pumped out of that drain there. That's definitely ejecting. I can see all the bubbles coming out of it down there. So, yes, and there we go. Right over there on the very far horizon is Levy, and I can still see lots of snow on Levy Fell, the Duntari in Levy, and there is definitely lots of snow over there. So uh, the water is basically flowing in this direction, and as you can see around the base of some of these trees, there are some quite strong flow marks. So the current is is strong. There is a lot of water in there, and it is moving at quite a rate. Um, let's go around here slightly. I hope you've been able to hear me alright. You probably haven't, but never mind. Um, yes, so these river, this river here, this area here is normally uh, just sort of riverbank. Um, I think the, the birch tree that's centre of frame right now is a good the base of the tree is a good meter and a half to two yeah a meter and a half underwater um this area here that they built up when they built all this seems to be surviving so far but again the you can see from the way they've built the um the flood defenses that they certainly expect at its worst for the water to be able to come at least a part ways over this area here. Um, we're going to go and take a look now to see what it's like around the base of the bridge. So, that's where I left you down there. We're walking along here. You can see that the, uh, the water level has still got a little way to go down here. There's still some of the original banking and things that the water hasn't breached yet but now we're walking up towards the the road from uh, that links Kittala to Sodengula and the rest of eastern Finland of course um, yes I appreciate the fact that the floods defences don't look particularly huge here but they don't really have to be that big here right now Wow. Okay, certainly here, this is about as high as I've... Yep, yeah, this is definitely as high as I've ever seen the water at, at this end. Even when the ice dams formed underneath the bridge a couple of years ago, uh, it never got this high. This is... This is high. Uh, I wonder if we can see through the gap in this trees. Yes! There we go. So, there seems to be a slight high watermark again on those bridge structures, but there's certainly nothing, uh, that certainly doesn't mean that the flood's going down anytime soon. Far from it, unfortunately. Uh, I would say from the top of the river right now to the base of the bridge at its highest is probably a meter and a half and to the road level on that bridge at its highest is about three meters at the lowest end here there isn't three meters from the top of the water to the road level so uh yeah well, that's quite high but the important thing for Kittala is that the water is actually flowing underneath that bridge um, and that there's no dams uh, of ice flowing or anything. It's just the sheer volume of water. Okay, I could see a fire engine slightly out of shot a few minutes ago. And I thought they were going to come down here. But uh, they've uh, turned around and gone the other way. So I've come down here now. 
so we can get a better look at what the river is like here wow that's a lot of water that is a heck of a lot of water um, the road over there uh, about 100 meters 50 to 100 meters past the end of this bridge uh, if the road isn't underwater it must have water on it in places because over there it does get uh, very low uh, as it runs through some old swampy land um, those houses there they look protected because they've got a bank around them uh, but they're not uh, the water will have come through the ground um, but they are just summer cottages and what have you over there right now um, so yeah this is Onosjoki in flood 31st of May 2020 uh, I'll update this I'll be uploading more videos throughout the week as and when I've got time with work so there we go, everybody.